I said that a performance and a result like that's embarrassing, totally unacceptable to the football club. I asked them for their opinions, and to be fair, two or three of them stood up and just completely agreed and said, under no circumstances that acceptable for a club and the group of players that we've got. They were given the information, we knew exactly how Burton would play. Hey, let's give a bit of credit to Burton because they, they play their game well and they, they took their opportunities and well done to Nigel. But focusing on ourselves, it's never going to be acceptable that. Where did that level of performance come from? Listen, we knew today that we were going to have a lot of possession in their half. We knew that they defend really, really well. They've got a fantastic shape. Um, they have a lot of pace on the counter-attack. The, we got a break in the first half when our goalkeeper saves the penalty after a, after a mistake. And that lifted the crowd a bit. That should have lifted the players. It? For a little spell, it was all right. But the first goal is an absolute nightmare. It's a, you wouldn't see it in the playground. For somebody to walk 50 yards through a team without anybody laying a glove on them is completely unacceptable. Half time, they're given a bit of a blast about the goal, but we know we're still going to have opportunities to have a lot of the ball. It's just what you do with that. We told them the biggest thing was that against a team like Burton, the last thing you do is leave the back door open because that, that's what they're going to have, potentially. And within four or five minutes of the second half, you're 2 nothing down. It's, it's just wrong. And um, after that, we huffed and puffed a little bit. OK, the last goal's the last goal. We're pushing on. But, um, no, too many players... The sooner the club points a new coach, the better. Uh, everybody can move on as it stands. I mean, I've got to. I mean, there's no announcement, no new coach in the door. The chairman's got to. I feel sorry for the chairman at the moment. He came in, he shook the hands of the players. Now, I'd, uh, man's done so much for the football club, and and his last couple of performances. It's not the last couple. There's been too many performances this season that have not been acceptable to the to the quality player that's in that changing room. Do you think these players are hurting as much as you are? They seemed it after the game, or two or three of them definitely seemed it. A couple are very, very quiet, but which you, which you can understand because when you know that you've not played to the standards that you set, it's quite often... That's that's when you just keep quiet. You keep your own counsel. You don't say too much. But there was a couple of boys out there today that I tell you what they worked their tails off, and they were vocal enough in their own assessment of it, which was a positive, I suppose. And a couple of them are ta uh, talking about looking over their shoulder as well. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You've got to be honest about it. What is it? I think we're six from the the bottom areas and twelve from the playoffs. Now I'll always be positive. I'll always look forward, and I know that always every season there's a club that comes from nowhere that sneaks in there, and there's enough games, and they can make up a twelve point gap, and that's the way we've got to look at it. But let's not beat around the bush. You're six points off the relegation area, and with performances like that, where do you see it going that way instead of that way? It's my responsibility as a coach, so I'll take it. The last couple of performances, absolutely no problem. No problem. Could you understand the fans' frustration? 100%. There was a block at the end there. He was just shouting to me, Lee, embarrassing, embarrassing. How can I How can I say any different to that? He's 100% spot on. And as I say, in the changing room, a couple of the boys were vocal enough to dig, it, dig out their teammates or the performance and say the same. The fans have every right after that result 
to say what they say. This team has won seven matches this season. Uh-huh. Has, the, has the club got to just look in the, the short term, the time it has to be to get to 50 points as soon as possible and then to rebuild to look towards next season? No, I think there's still a lot to play for this season. As I said to you, personally, and I'm sure the new coach that comes in, 12 points is not insurmountable. But when you're performing like that is, but the players that we have in the squad, if they play with the confidence and the quality that they do have, and we get start to get one or two back, um, it's not an impossibility. But it's got to be better than today. How important is it for the club to appoint a new manager now as soon as possible? As soon as possible for me, yeah. I think it's so important it gets done ASAP. Has there been any more development? None that I'm aware of. We're, we're in constant contact, so the chairman, I'm sure, will let me know. As I, as I said, um, as it stands at the moment, I've got to start preparation for Carlisle next week. Um, try and get players lifted mentally. That's my my job, is it? That's my remit at the moment. Um, and then when a new coach comes in, then I'm sure the chairman will let you know. And how much would you like to be part of the regime when the appointment is made? Of course, I want to stay at the football club. I love the football club. I'm, I've had too much history at the football club, and that's why today is just. So painful. So painful. Um, of course, I'd love to be part of that, but I'm realistic enough to know that if a new man comes in, they'll have his own ideas on that. If I can help in any way, I'd love to be part of that, but I'm realistic and I fully understand the nature of the beast that is football. How many injuries? Anything George Boyd, next week. One of them, thank goodness. Obviously, we got Jack back today, but then he's he's, he's tweaked his knee again, so it, it ballooned a little bit, and that's why we've had to take him off. Glenn Leuven's played with a major illness at, down at Brentford, and we had to try and shoehorn him back in again today. To be fair, he probably shouldn't have started the game. I've asked him to do it, and he probably shouldn't have started. So we brought Danny on at half-time. Um, but it'd be great to get George back in, back involved, so he'll be available for selection for Carlisle. Is a big part of the disappointment me the fact that those players there, they're, they're covering for essentially a lot, a lot of players who are injured. They, this should be an opportunity for them to go. This is my place. I want to. I'm, I'm going to nail this down here, and, and those players out there are not, are not taking that. I'm hoping that they feel frustrated from that point of view. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Listen, I've said it in the last three interviews, when you start talking about the injuries, it looks as if you're looking for excuses or a get-out clause. And because the players that were selected today are in that squad, are all experienced boys. They've got thousands of games at this level. Some guys have had two or three promotion. Glenn's won the UEFA Cup with uh, Eindhoven. He's played at Celtic. We've got Ross Wallace played at Celtic. You've got guys who have vast experience in this, in this league. So there's no excuses as a group, as from me as the interim coach and the staff to the players to lose that game. Yes, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Burton because congratulations to Nigel and his boys because they, they did a number. But the goals we lose are so bad.